this last year has been at its worst hugely traumatic and likely to cost us all a fortune in future therapy um, but at its best this year has been a really good opportunity to be resilient for me this was a year of huge change i experienced first-time grief for the first time i moved back into my family home and away from the life i'd built on my own and all around me the world fell apart if 2020 had happened to the me i was two or three years ago, I think I would have really struggled. If I'm completely honest, I would have definitely spiraled. But this past year, I've been resilient and I've found strength, as I usually do, through my writing. For a few years in my early 20s, I was in treatment for bulimia. At the same time as showing up to treatment and participating in therapy, I was absolutely convinced I didn't have a problem and totally unwilling to change. I had a very distorted body image and couldn't understand the first from everyone around me. In fact, it was only when I started to notice physical symptoms of being unwell and the effect my mental health was having on my body that I started to admit I might need help understanding myself. While all this was happening, I was doing my undergraduate degree in creative writing at Bath Spa. Writing was, for a solid couple of years, pretty much the only thing that brought me joy. I started off by writing everything, poetry, short stories, fiction, until I finally found my writing voice in young adult and middle grade children's books. Once I found that voice, I was excelling in the degree, getting consistent first, uh, loads of praise and signing with a literary agent when I was really young. And then before I knew it, I placed so much of my worth and value as a person on how good of a writer I was that nothing else mattered. I became obsessed with getting the best grades at uni and producing con consistently good writing and did precious little else with my time, including not taking care of my mental health. So. One day, a year or so into treatment, I was sitting in a group therapy session with a handful of other girls on those like creaky plastic school chairs. And the therapist handed out pieces of paper and coloring pencils and asked us to write a letter to our future selves. This was definitely not the first time we've been asked to write as a part of therapy. There had been mind mapping and list making and goal setting, but this was the first time that I put writing and therapy into the same box in my head. Suddenly it was like something inside of me clicked. In that boxy little room in a semicircle with nine other girls holding these little chewed up coloring pencils, I had a light bulb moment. What if writing and therapy were linked? I mean, I never felt mentally better than when I was deep in a writing project, but what if I'd sucked all of the fun out of it by putting so much pressure on it? What if I didn't have to be good at writing? And more than that, what if I could write completely for me and not for the judgment and approval of anyone else? I had a bit of an all or nothing mindset that I had to work hard to get out of. Because in my mind, I could put all of my effort and energy into my writing or into my recovery. Turns out you can do both at the same time. So when times were hardest and I didn't know where to turn to, I started to turn to writing. For me, writing took the scariness out of stuff. I didn't have to say anything out loud. I didn't have to confront my emotions in the really upfront way I was used to doing in therapy. I didn't have to get it all right the first time, which was something I'd really struggled with because I was used to self-monitoring my language for everyone around me. As well as this, writing made everything real. Everything I convinced myself almost didn't happen or I was overreacting about or every emotion that I felt wasn't really justified. Once I'd written it down, I made it permanent. It's real, it's valid, it's pen on paper or words on a screen, but it exists in a way that it didn't when it was just floating around in my mind. I wrote my first full manuscript about a girl that runs away with her dead best mate. I used the character of this dead girl to explore my relationship with my eating disorder and how it often felt like some sort of toxic best mate. Like you trust her, you know she's wrong, you also think you might not have any other mates if you decide to leave her. I spent a year on Bath Spa's MA in writing for young people, pretending I was writing a complete work of fiction when I was actually using my hospital trips for setting research and my therapy sessions for character inspiration. I have never delved deeper into myself than when I was trying to weave together complicated, realistic characters from pieces of my subconscious. Anyway, my agent and I sent the book out to publishers and we got some great feedback, but it didn't sell. That didn't matter. By the time I'd hit send on the email that carried the manuscript, I couldn't care less whether it sold or not. It had all been therapy. I'd written a full length young adult novel just to give myself the space I needed to heal. So when I graduated the MA, I moved to Oxford on a whim and also on a whim, I started teaching a creative writing class for adults in a cafe called Common Ground. 
I chose Common Ground's teaching because it was this big open space cluttered with mismatched furniture, kind of reminded me of the cafe from Friends. Uh, it was always full of students writing and people working and the coffee was pretty good as well. The owner put a little ad on the website and I stuck up a little handmade poster and on the first session we had almost 40 students turn up. Naturally I was completely overwhelmed. We had to pull together tables from all around the cafe and make them into this big hybrid workspace so everyone could sit down. I called the course Mindfulness Writing and I designed the whole thing around writing for our mental well-being. We looked at fiction and how to work different aspects of yourself into writing whilst fictionalizing the characters and distancing yourself from the work. We looked at why the morning commute was the best place to write poetry and what good self-care we should be practicing as writers. I did not expect the course to be a success. I definitely didn't expect so many different people to show up. I thought it'd be mostly students and young adults, but it wasn't. Mental health nurses came to see if they could steal some techniques to use with their patients. Oxford professors came for a bit of light relief. Regular writers and people who had never written creatively before all came and showed up and kept showing up for themselves long after we finished working together. These people all had one thing in common. They believed that creative writing had the power to benefit their well-being. About a year after I started teaching creative writing casually, I volunteered with St Mungo's, which is a homelessness charity, teaching some creative writing classes in their recovery college in Reading. I'd catch the train from Oxford every Wednesday and go sit in a room with a handful of blokes 10, 20 years older than I was and teach them to write. All of my students were male, all had experience of homelessness or insecure housing, and the majority of them had a criminal record and had struggled with substance and alcohol abuse. So I showed up to the first class with two things in mind. One, these people will never take me seriously. I'm 23, these are full on grown up men who've been through more than I will ever know. What could they possibly have to learn from me? And the second thing was, why do they want to write? The other classes the Recovery College in Reading offered were things like cooking, IT skills, building a CV, things that I definitely considered to be important life skills. So even though I did believe in the power of creative writing and I was starting to really explore it as a therapeutic tool, I couldn't wrap my head around the idea that these people who were really struggling might sign up for a creative writing class rather than something I deemed to be a bit more important. I was really intimidated walking into the room for the first time. I felt so underqualified. I'm not a counsellor, I'm not experienced in this area. I really have no idea what I'm doing or what creative writing exercises they'll want to do even what they're going to want to write about. I'd already decided that the workshops weren't going to run like the ones that I usually led and I picked techniques that were probably closer to the therapy I'd had than the classes I'd taught. Instead of sharing our writing as a group which can open really personal writing up to criticism or lead to others comparing their experiences in a way that sometimes isn't very productive, I was going to stress at the start of the class that we weren't going to share the writing with anyone else, that everything we wrote in the next hour would be completely for us. I shouldn't have planned anything. I mean, within 10 minutes of writing the class, it was clear to me everything I had planned had gone completely out the window. One student was a talented rapper and wanted help writing song lyrics. Um, another was interested in poetry. One was writing a full length fantasy manuscript. I was baffled, completely out of my depth in a way that I hadn't expected. I'm not a poet or a fantasy writer or a rapper unless I've had a few drinks. I made loads of phone calls to writing friends and past teachers and really worked hard on putting resources together to help these students but they didn't even want me to teach them all they needed was me to offer them a space in which writing creatively was something they were allowed and encouraged to do so a few months in i found myself asking them the question why write the student writing a fantasy novel was using the plot to explore class divides and basing characters on people he knew from living on the streets he told me it was like escapism, the same reason he liked to read, to explore a reality different to the one he'd experienced. The rapper said that the songs helped him process things and the act of actually creating them made him feel productive and powerful. The poet said that writing things down made things real. So what is it about challenging times that makes us want to write? I personally think it's three things in general, processing, validating what's happened, and sometimes just release. I think it's really easy to hold on to things without even consciously realizing sometimes. 
whether it's grief or worry or the stress of a global pandemic, for example. I think we store these things inside of us and if we let them, they'll just eat away. Writing for me gets everything from here onto the paper and releases it. So you might be sitting here thinking, I'm not a writer, can't be bothered carrying a notebook around everywhere I go. I don't have the time to sit and pour my heart out into a journal. Bridget Jones came out ages ago, Beth, no one writes diaries anymore. To this, I would say, I don't think writing has to be as black and white as it has been in the past. I've got a mate that, if you asked her, she would swear she isn't a writer. We've known each other for 14 years and there's always been this clear distinction between the two of us. I am the chaotic creative one and she is very business minded and very successful for it. Even though she'd say to you she isn't a writer, can't write, all the rest of it, she confessed to me recently that she's got an email chain on her work laptop and she sends herself emails when she needs to have a rant. So every time she feels her boss is being unfair or she feels undervalued as an employee or she just needs to have a moan, she'll add to this email chain by sending herself a long whining ramble about whatever she needs to. When she told me this, I was like, so you've got a journal? No, I don't, she insisted. I just sometimes need to write stuff down to get out my head. The world has moved on from this romanticized idea that we must carry a beautiful leather bound notebook everywhere with us if we want to be true creative writers. It's fine if you want to type instead. It's cool if you want to write long elaborate essays or a handful of bullet points on the back of an old napkin. A chewed up biro on the back of a receipt is going to work just fine. Next time you look down at your phone when you're on the morning commute or sit mindlessly doom scrolling after you've had dinner, maybe let your thumb hover over to the notes app. Take a minute to check in with yourself, whether all you're doing is writing a little note, jotting down the events of the day or channeling your creativity into something lyrical and poetic. The point is, you'll be writing. And maybe writing won't solve all of your problems. Maybe you don't need to write the next best-selling memoir or get your sad poetry published in online journals. But maybe the act of writing down your emotions, really taking the time to validate your experiences and giving yourself permission to be creative in a raw and emotional way, maybe that's the way that writing can heal. Thank you.